Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Tyler. Sorry, Seth. <laughs> hey, everyone. How's it going? Can you guys hear me okay? All right. Let me see, make sure everything's looking good. Um, doing regular hangouts tonight. That um, OBS thing, I wasn't getting that thing to work properly, so went back to good old hangouts. Is Tyler flossing? I don't know what he was doing. So how's everyone doing? Um, Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. Is that Billy Pipes? Uh, all right. So, hey, um, let me just do a roll call. Hey, Reef Keeper. Um, Braveheart. Awoken. Click Clacks Reef. Tyler Seymour. Um, Reefing with O. And Braveheart Reef. The Aquarium Monster E Money. Squad up. What's. What's up? E money for American Reefing. I'm good, man. I'm good. Everything is good. Yeah, Billy jumped in for a second and jumped out. I'm sure Billy is going to join us later. Um, I'm gonna try and stream for two hours tonight. I got some um, some stuff to handle, but um, I figured you know start a little early. I usually start about nine Eastern. Start a little early, and then um, you know. There's a camera right here. Yeah, I should stick. start at 8.30 and end at 10.30 Eastern, which is 7.30 for you guys on the West Coast. So I'm going to try and stick to that. Hey, Click Clack. Um, I think you're one of the admins of the, you know what, let me move these screens around so it doesn't look like I'm not looking at the camera. I don't need to look at myself, so let me just move some stuff around. Um, that is much better. Um, hey, Click Clacks, have you seen the new AI Prime Refugium lights? I saw, um, I'm a member of the Ecotech Experts group, and um, yeah, and I saw, you know, they had like a challenge, you know, asking us some questions. Um, about it, but um, yeah, that looks interesting. It's basically an AI prime, but like with the, you know, like the refugium spectrum. Uh, the, the, it's sort of like the Chato Grow Light, but the AI prime, and I'm excited about that. I don't think it's as powerful as a Kessel, but um, in terms of ease of use, controllability, I'm ex I'm excited about that. Billy said he's going to shower real quick. BRB and American Reefing. Hopefully get out of work a little early tonight. All right, man. If you get out early, let me know. Hey, E-Money, you late on Christmas, bro. Listen, man. Got family, got kids, got stuff to get. You know, my wife got home. Got to, you know, make sure she's all right. So, um, yeah, things looking good. Things are looking good. Um, what did everyone get for Christmas? Let me reach out with my squeaky chair. Um, I guess the reef-related thing I got for Christmas, of course, got money, which, you know, always um, always good to get money. Um, but I got a GoPro. I got a GoPro Hero 7. I think this is the main thing I got for Christmas, reef tank-related. And I haven't had a chance to kind of check this out yet too much, but I gotta say, I'm, I've seen some videos of it and I'm really excited. I'm really excited to kind of see, hopefully I'll be able to just, you know, pull this out and start recording, um, you know, like videos of my tank without having to mess with stuff too much. So I'm really excited. Like something like this, you can always have with you. This is it. This is the tripod. You can go in, you turn it around, take selfies, you know, hey, this is me. Um, so anywhere you go, you basically have a nice camera. That's what. Um, yeah, you basically have a nice camera. So I'm excited. This is what I got for Christmas reef tank related. What did some of you guys get? 
Hello, Lisa. Oh, thanks, Tyler. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this GoPro. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I have no idea how it works. I haven't started figuring out yet. Let me get some more lights on me right here. Oh, that looks much better. Yeah, thank you. Little tripod here so I can set it up. So basically, I could be recording myself. You know what? How about I do that and see how that turns out? So how about I record myself recording and... Okay, that would be cool. We'll see how the audio and everything comes out. Hello, Tina. Um, let me see if I can get a link in case anyone wants to jump in. Still a lot going on here. In terms of links. I am terrible at this. What's up, Tina? Ah, so you got spoiled. Thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, I give nice gifts, so it's nice to get a nice gift. I'm not sure which one of these links work, but that's the bit.ly link. That is the Hangouts link. And Phil somehow turned that into a redirect link. So, um, yep, thank you. Hopefully that works. All right. Hey, um, I was talking to Reefkeeper Phil about, um, you know, our GHL dosers. He and I both have GHL 2.1 forehead dosers. And I was really, I think initially I was really happy with it. There were some things about mine that I was really annoyed with, like really annoyed with, you know, like the fact that you needed a Windows PC to set it up. Um, you know, I'm a Mac user at home. Um, so there were a few things with it that were just a little annoying. Not, but, but, you know, I got recommended that the hardware was good and it was a smaller form factor. Um, you know, the Neptune Systems dose, which, you know, I, I guess it's, compared against is huge. Like, I mean, the size is, it's not even, like we're talking like this for the dose to like just a flat little, maybe four inches high for the GHL 2.1. And I have to say like, when I initially got it, loved it. And I think over the past year, I would say my happiness with it has just been dwindling and dwindling away until I think this week, um, I finally tried to recalibrate it after about six or so months. The dosing heads were way off. I think when I did, you know, how you calibrate dosers, you get like a little graduated cylinder. You, you know, do whatever calibration program on the pump. You press it, it doses for one minute. And whatever it doses in one minute, you enter that in the pump. So the pump knows how much you're dosing in one minute. And I think one head was... At like maybe nine mils, one was at 19. It, it was just all over the place. So I, I know it's six to eight months since I calibrated it, but for it to be that off. And then thankfully Phil kind of warned me about his heads breaking. So I had an extra head, one of my heads broke. So it, it's just been, um, and finally like they let me know like, hey, your doser is out of, you know, it, it needs updating, but you need to get a Windows PC to update it. And unfortunately, I don't have a Windy's, Windows PC around, so I either need to go borrow a Windows PC or bring my doser to a friend's house. Yeah, so, because I have my work PC here and I don't, I'm not sure, I, listen, I don't even want, I don't want to install anything on the work PC, so. Um, so Phil says, my GHL has been very precise on dosing, but the heads broke at one year, four months, and now I'm having connectivity issues. Change into a calcium reactor, whoop, whoop. All right. So Phil, you've made the decision. 
to go to a calcium reactor. All right, man, I'm happy. I'm going to watch you and then decide what I'm going to do. But um, I went on Reef to Reef on the GHL and I started reading and apparently people have been having like a whole bunch of issues. Like that head breaking thing is not anything new. And in fact, some of the stuff that was replaced, you know, also broke. So, hey, Tina, you jumped in. Tina, how are you? Doing good. How are you? Ah, uh, Tina, I cannot hear you. So let me. Uh -oh. Well, that's probably because I'm standing clear across the room. Let me check and make sure. My no, no, no. It's not you. Definitely not you. And my volume is definitely up. Ah, uh, it is not you. It, it is. My thing is not sending audio through my headphones. So it's definitely not you. All right, let me see if I can just, just give me a sec. Let me see if I can fix that. All right, say something again, Tina. Hello, everybody. All right, not working. So I will give up this and just, we'll talk like humans. <laughs> can you hear me now? I can hear. All right. This is my son's gaming headset. Let me see if this works. Hello, Tina. Hello, Mr. O. Oh. Audio. Yeah, Lisa, and there's been a couple other people say that they can hear, so. Hello, Tina. Hello, Mr. O. Oh, all right. All right. I think I figured it out. Give me one sec. Yeah. Ah, Tina. I didn't know that when you're using headphones with Hangouts, you have to actually tell Hangouts which headphone jack to use. Interesting. Oh, yeah. It that might help, huh? Yeah, didn't know that. All right, cool. So, all right, so we are working now. And all of a sudden now, yep. All right, yeah. So how's everything going, Tina? Pretty good. I got you guys sitting in front of the new 65-gallon tank that I set up a few weeks ago. Oh. This is, what are the dimensions of this 65? It is a three foot by 18 by 24. Three foot by 18 deep? Yep. By 24 high? What? 24 yeah, it, high? It's very deep, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, do you need a stand to be able to reach the bottom? Uh, actually, I use, I use a, a step when I clean my 75 gallon, but it's like, four inches taller i want to say than my 75 so yeah I, I had to go buy longer sticks and stuff like that you know for stirring the sand and just a little bit longer uh arm for my oh i guess the algae scraper but other than that you know i can still manage to get to the bottom of that when i do a water change so i'm not like drowning in the tank all right um um, I see some comments that say your aquascape looks good. Yeah, it's better yeah. than it was. <laughs> so, it's so, really with all the blues. so what the other tank, what was it, a 75? It is a 75, yes. I have two. Oh, so you okay, so you so you're running two tanks now, yes, sir. All right, all right, all right. Hey, what's up, Dave? Hey, what's up, exclusive? What's up, Sherry's Reef Falcon Quick? Um, all right, so you can give hear. you guys right. bird's eye view here, both of them. I'm not sure if I can or not. Hello, Grant Oster. How are you doing, sir? Hello, Alex G. Hey, can we drop a link and see if uh, Mr. Grant or Mr. Alex G wants to hop in? Oh, so, oh, damn, Tina. So you're now, you have the multiple tank syndrome now, MTS. <laughs> can you guys see him okay? Yeah, we can see him. I mean, the blues are on, but yeah. The 75 is over here. 
Hang on, I gotta catch up. The 75 is this one, and the 65 is over in the corner. Oh, so what lights are you? What lights are you running over the 75? The I'm 65, using sorry. 65. I'm using the same ones. I'm using no current marine um, LED IC pros. Okay. Um, the only difference is in the 65 is that they have a um, what do you call the brackets that you hang the lights with. So this one has brackets on it, and the other one sits right on the tank. All right, I have to admit, I don't know too much about that current USA Orbit, so I'm gonna look it up. Um, I think I saw, what, um, there's a guy from Chicago who um, does YouTube videos. I think he uses current Marine, a uh, current USA. Um, I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, um, they work really well. I mean, they're growing my corals like crazy, so. There's something to it. I don't think I'll go any high-end SPS, you know, like Walt Disney's or Acros or anything like that. But it, it's growing my the SPS that I have in there very well. Is that the one with sort of like different rows of blues and whites? Yes. Yeah, oh, it comes on. And then it, you can time it on. It's got a sun up feature and a sun down feature. Uh, and, and you like the color this gives off? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't. I don't like my tank too blue unless it's at night. You know, some people like to run their blues all the time, and I just don't like that look. I don't like that look either, because I think growing up in the tropics and going to the beach, I don't think it was always blue. So I, I personally don't like. I mean, at night I have it go blue, but I personally don't like. Um, I don't like just like you. I don't like all blues. Yeah. All right. Okay. Current Marine IC Pro. Okay. You know what? I've never seen this light in person, but all right. I'm definitely going to be following your progress and I'm going to be asking you about that light a lot because okay, I know. Go back and watch my videos and you'll, you'll hear me talking about it. I'm getting ready to do a 10 month update here. All right. All right. Um, someone said it cannot hear can you guys hear lisa um can't hear lisa or tina it's my son is saying he can't hear lisa tyler i don't know like it's first of all it's tina talking um lisa's not in so i don't know you couldn't hear lisa all right hey alex how are you man i'm doing good oh this Getting over a sore throat. All right. What's up, OG's Fish Room? Um, hey, Exclusive, you want to jump in and tell us about your tank and how it's going? Hello, Mr. Alex. Hi, Tina. Yeah, Alex doesn't sound too... Alex sounds kind of downbeat a little bit. Uh, it feels like I'm swallowing ground-up glass. Aww. I it, it took me a minute to picture that, and I mean, uh, now you're making my throat hurt. Sorry. What's up, Blue Basin? What's up, David? Too. Hey, Ash. Fuck a. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> hey, Ash. Let me just say, Ash. I always try to pronounce his name and never get it. Hey, Ash. How you doing? Um. Hey, Chimp, um, Ash is saying, send him the link. Um, hey, Ash, what's your email address? Uh, hey, Ash, what's your, what's your email address? Just post your email address for a second. Let me copy it, and I see if I can add you or shoot you an email, um, if you can jump in there. Hey, is wait a second. Did that say Asa? Is that Asa? Yes, it is. How's it going? Uh, Asa, I don't think I've spoken to you or seen you since Reefa Palooza when I, we, we had dinner. It's been that long. Yeah, I think Yeah, I think I was on a, few, a couple of places where you were on, um, but I couldn't get in. Oh. Uh. All right. Good to see you. 
Yeah, how good was to the, talk to you too. How is the tank going? Uh it's 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 uh hit and miss. Uh I got some uh got some a lot of fish in there doing well. Um I got ick in there and they seem to just shake it off. And uh so uh, that's doing pretty well. I, I I cooked my um um what do you call it? Uh my refugium because the water level got down too low and and uh so the heater went crazy and cooked everything. Oh no. Uh but but the tank's not not doing too bad. It's just not making a lot of progress. I just haven't really installed a bunch of stuff that needs to be installed. So no corals in there yet? Uh, just a few, hardly anything. Uh, you know, I, I originally put in some um, um, gargonians, big ones, mm -hmm. and they're they're doing pretty good for the most part. And uh, uh, but I hadn't started putting any stonies in because I don't have my uh, uh, what do you call it? Calcium reactor, uh, put together, uh, assembled. Mm -hmm. So I've got all the parts and whatnot. All right. So you're definitely going calcium reactor. I was, you know what? Yeah. I, I am considering going calcium reactor. I think I'm... the one thing that's holding me back is I already suffer from really low pH. And I, you know, I'm doing Triton and I'm okay with it, but I'm seriously considering like me? doing a calcium reactor. I don't know I'm if also it's gonna, just... I'm also going to uh, run a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the German uh, stuff you put in the water. I uh, can't think of what you call it. Um, gosh. Calcwasser, yeah, Calcwasser as well. So, so calcium reactor and Calcwasser. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Uh, so I, you know what I did? Uh, I did that a couple of months. So what happens is I saturated Calcwasser fully, putting on a dosing pump that dose at night, because when when you my pH will bottom out at about seven point seven at night. But when you keep yeah. it at about 7.8, 7.9, during the day, it'll go over 8. So I was doing um, Kalkwasser, like, but the thing is I was doing gallon jugs, and I would go through the gallon jugs in a week. And I think just changing something, mixing it up every week, I just got tired of doing that. So I think I might do that again, but with maybe a three-gallon bucket. So yeah, maybe it's, yeah. you know, every two and a half, three weeks instead of weekly. Well, what my intent is, to, it, it, I've got these uh, big six foot tubes that are six inch in diameter. So uh, I'm going to make uh, two, three foot um, uh, calcium reactors and, and then probably a, uh, about a four foot, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, about a two and a half foot. Uh, Can I see us? Calcwasser reactor, yeah, like a Nelson reactor where it spins at the bottom slowly. And if it's got a really tall column, that thing can be spinning constantly and the top is us? still uh, clear as a bell. Can you see us? And so then I'll just use the no. uh, uh, pump to uh, pump the water through, you know, a peristalgic pump. Are you building that yourself? Because from what I understand, yes. like those Kalkwasser reactors, the pumps um, are not are what's not too reliable on those things. You know, what I want, like I say, what I want to do is uh, I'll have the the you know like a, a electronic stirring device, magnetic stir mm -hmm. at the bottom, oh. and I'll have that spinning kind of slowly, but with a really tall column of water. Hopefully that I, I'm just gonna it's gonna be disturbed at the bottom, but the top is gonna be saturated. So I'll just use a uh, peristaltic pump to pump through what I want. I have it go in through the bottom and take it out through the top, so okay. I don't ever have to worry about you know uh, stoking my tank full of of milky white acid water. All right, so I'm thinking about that now, and yes. You know what? That might be a lot easier. Like I think, from what I've seen, like these little stirrers, I've 
I've only ever seen little ones, but I'm pretty sure like getting one that's a little bit upsized shouldn't be a problem. Because even now, you know, look up uh, Nelson reactor, uh, and you'd probably have to build it yourself. I don't think anybody sells them, but uh, they're pretty pretty interesting. All right, I'll definitely look it up. I hey, uh, I I got some uh, a question for you. Um, you know, I'm I got my auto top off working. Uh, the ATO. I, I saw your your uh, your video. Uh, your video. Uh-huh. And uh, my setup is a little different. I've got a 30 gallon auto top off and a 55 gallon uh, freshwater reservoir. And uh, I have a second uh, ATK over there, you know, with the float valve and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I've got a uh, still a separate uh, uh, sensor for the bottom. And I'm wondering if you could write some code for me just for that, just for that uh, second, uh, the, the freshwater auto top off. So I you, doubt that any- you have an ATO reservoir, regular 30 yeah. gallon, and then you have a second reservoir that refills the main one. That's and right. you have an optical sensor at the bottom of the first one or the second one. Uh, I've got an optical sensor at the bottom of the freshwater reservoir. Mm-hmm. And then I've got the ATK at the top. So what I want to do is, I, I, you know, I had the code worked out before, but I'd like to see yours and see how it compares to mine. But basically, uh, once it gets low, I want it to, to stay off until it gets all the way down to the low sensor and then fill it all the way back up to the top and then shut off. All right. All right. Um, I think I have your number, right, Asa? Uh, if not, you got my my emails, herring underscore fish All right. at yahoo.com. All right, let me um let me let me let me write that down. Herring underscore fish at yahoo.com. All right. right. All right. So I'll email you. I will think okay, of something I'll... and email you. Yeah, I'm just curious to see what your your code will look like uh, compared to what I I hashed out in the past. All right. All right. All right. Hey, Ash, how are you yes. doing, Ash? Not too bad. Not too bad. How are you guys doing? Merry Christmas to everybody. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Merry Christmas. Merry yeah. Christmas, Did everybody. your son get lots of good stuff? Well, guess what? Santa showed up to my house, I guess, and I got, a, a, I don't even know how to say this. I went to an LFS today because uh, I wanted to buy a blonde naso tank for my tank. So... We went to my buddy's house yesterday for Christmas, and he has a 200 gallon with a nice, sick, I would say, almost eight inches uh, blonde nasal, eight to nine inches, like big. And my mom fell in love with this fish, you know. So she's like, Ash, how come you don't have this fish? And I'm like, Mom, that's just too big for my um, 120 gallon. Mm hmm. And then my buddy is like, but yeah, you also have a five foot tank. Mine is a five foot, you know, it's a 200 gallon, but it's a five foot. So you could have one smaller in size. So I'm like, okay, you know, I, I can pick one smaller. So luckily one of uh, my uh, close LFS had one on Christmas sale going on. So I got in touch with him and he said, yeah, I got one last left for the price that he was selling. $120 less 30% discount that comes to like 90 he was ready to give me for $80. I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'll be there. When it's to pick it up? Uh, it's actually five, five inch plus, I would say five, between five inch, five and a half inch. That's not a bad size. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you guys. It's in my display now. I just uh, actually made it after an hour or so. He's already out swimming. But here's the funny story. So he bagged this fish into big bag, right? Because it's a six-inch fish driving and all sorts of stuff. Apparently, this fish in his tank was in, you know, when the LFS, they have those big PVC four-inch pipes they keep there, right? So she went into that PVC pipe, and he went basically just went with the net on the other side, turned the pipe upside down so the fish goes straight into the net. This way, it's easy for him to catch the fish. He did that, bagged it up, 
and I bought some more fishes while I was there for a couple of my other buddies came home and as soon as I opened this big bag to try and start the acclimation I see a small fish in there like literally two uh, two inches fish and I'm like how the hell the fish reduced to that size that's not my naso at all and I'm like no that's not naso and again it was dark right when you open the bag was a newspaper in there and right at the bottom for the water to and everything so i'm like where is my naso this is not the naso i bought this is for sure it's not a naso so i kind of moved the bag a little bit here and there and sure enough i saw my naso in there so i'm like how how come there's two fish in here what is going on it should be only one fish in that that big bag that was for the naso because all the other fishes were bagged individually so i'm like well what is going on so I, uh, you know, while I was there, I saw the other tanks displays all there. They had, you know, the clown tanks in there. Ooh. You know, one of the lion clown tanks. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, maybe this is one of the clown tanks that he accidentally, you know, probably was in the PVC pipe. He never saw it, and he accidentally just bagged it, right? So I sent him the picture, and I'm like, you know, Ryan, you got this fish. I have my naso, but there is another fish in here that. I don't know what fish is this. This is a tank for sure, but what fish is that? I don't know. Maybe a clown tank. And he then told me, "Ash, that's not a clown tank." And I'm like, "What is it? It's a sohol tank." Ooh. Wow. I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" He like, "That's a $200 fish right oh. there." Did you get to keep it? I so I told him I'm like listen what do you want me to do I mean I read I did some uh, you know read up and mm-hmm. everything so holes are very aggressive mm-hmm. as they get big and everything but because this is going to be the last fish going to be going in my tank am I going to need to worry about and all my other tanks are 4 inches right like I got a purple I got a de jardini my naso is 5 inch plus and a yellow tank which is 3 and a half inches so they are all pretty good size right and they are established so the guy said since this is going to be the last tank that you're going to end up putting it in you don't have to worry about any aggression because she will be the last one. Okay. And and I'm like okay well so let's talk money or I can bring it back. I have a frack tank that I set up over the weekend. I can put him into the frack tank and if you want you can come by and pick it up. He's like Nah, I'm not going to come pick it up. It's just too much of a hassle. Just give me the cost price. My cost is $80. <laughs> and I'll show you guys right now. It's actually being acclimated. Give me a second. Yeah, a sohal tank. You know that Ash. You know, you know that fish gets yeah. even bigger than you know that thing is like a foot. Can get up to a foot long. Yeah, I know. I trust me. I've done all that that reading and everything, and I'm like, well, is it gonna get that bigger in my tank? It's like it all depends on how big your aquarium is, right? If it's if it gets really big, you can always, you know, bring it in, trade it in, whatever. Okay. So, he, so right now, here are some fishes. And here is, okay, see right there, uh, right under the uh, the yellow, on the right-hand side, right under the tube. That's a sohol right there. Right there. Are you able to see it? Yeah. It's uh, actually, let me see if I can point it with the camera. Okay, right there. That's the sohol right there. See, she's already showing aggression to the small ones, the purple and the yellow, because the purple is my buddy's uh, tank, uh, who's going to come pick up shortly. And this one is the yellow, going to go into my this uh, frack tank. And it's a small, it's like, you know, maybe an inch, inch and a half yellow. But look at that sohol, like, look how aggressive she is. Oh. How, how, how many gallons is your tank, Ash? 120. <laughs> good, good luck to you, sir. I know. Hey. I know, I know. Hey, I'm going to. Ash, Ash yeah. Aaron's Aquariums yeah. has a, what is it, a 300 gallon tank? And, um, yeah. and he had aggressive issues with his before it was yeah. fully grown. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I hate mean, I hate I hate to tell you, Ash, but I would love to get a Soho or a clown tank. Yeah. But even in my seven hundred and twenty gallon tank, it'd probably be the very last fish I had. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you don't want to, yeah. You just never know. Sometimes they'll be okay, and sometimes not so much. Oh, yeah. They, it's, it's, it's in the nature, apparently. I did some reading on that, and I'm like, ah, oh, well, you know what? It's a, it's a hit and miss. It's going to be the last fish to go in the tank. Um, you never know. But I don't know. I mean, I might keep it. I might just, uh, you know, sell it back. So is this the type that's on uh, Reef to Reef as their uh, logo fish? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, I've got one of those, and uh, it chilled out real nice. I've got 180, okay. but um, it, it didn't do bad. I had one of the, the, the big one you just said you got, but uh -huh. mine was only four inches. Okay. It was only four inches, and they say you really need to have five or bigger because they get too nervous. Okay. After about two or three days, it died. Okay. But uh, this other one chilled out pretty good. It's just oh. it's it's doing just fine. Yeah, I think it's 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 on the tap. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's in the end, it's in the nature of being aggressive. But uh, you know, most of my fish, like all my other tanks, as you guys can see, like. You know, four inches and a half. Uh, worst come was you can always catch it. Hey, Alex, uh, what is that? Aptasia X you put in on the tank? Yeah, I got a few Aptasias. I'm just, I went in and nuked them. Does it work? Yeah. I mean, it's not always 100%, but a lot of times it'll work. Yeah. Actually, the Aptisha X, it has worked for me in the past. You never know. I mean, there's, there's always, uh, you know, one or two here and there that they will pop out and you just stay, got to stay on top of it. Yeah, I mean, if it doesn't really ingest it, it, it doesn't always do the job, but, you know, I just keep an eye on it. I got a handful of them in here, so. Yo, something happened. Yo, we just had a power hit in New York. Uh oh. A what? A power hit. Yo, something happened. A power hit? Yeah, there, there's something's happening with the sky in New York. A power hit. I don't. What's... Yo, Seymour, are you looking at this? No. Yo, look out your window. Yo, my uh, lights just went went out. Oh, your lights went out. I, well. Um, Yo, but are you seeing the sky? Oh, I'm seeing what you are showing, yeah. Wow. I'm Look at the sky. Look at this. My lights, everything just went dark. And look at this. This is the sky. And like it's, all the lights outside are all dimming. It's lightning, is it? It's not lightning. It's something wow. else. It's only it's only one area in the sky. It's only over there. Very That's weird. Crazy, man. <laughs> This yeah, that's is crazy. Freaky. That's crazy. Nope. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna text my wife and tell her to watch the news. Yeah. So something's going on. My whole power just went off. Like my cable, everything went off. Except my internet. But look at these colors. This is like something is going on. Definitely. That's crazy. I can see that. It's it's yeah. like just yeah, one side. Yeah, I see it too. Oh, oh no. I see. It. What is it? Blue over there. Yeah, it's like wow. blue. It's changing different colors, uh, at least from the way I can see it. It looks like it goes blue and then yellow and then red. I see white and then it turns blue and yeah. then, yeah, it's like more like a sky blue. And yeah, I have I, no idea what's back there. Is that back? is that where the airport is? Yeah, I have no idea. Is that where the port is? No, this is, well, this is like Corona Park or something. But what's this up? is this is not Are definitely you? not fireworks. Something... I don't know. Like the whole sky is baby blue. Yeah, like yeah. something like a trans. That looks like something electrical. Yeah, uh, I think it's like yeah. a transformer. Yeah, it's uh, the way how it's sparkling. I mean, it's 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 just that one spot. Hey, what's up, producer Reef? Hey, let me uh, let me see if I can get you guys a link. I. I don't know what's going on with the link. It seems like I don't know how to create links anymore.
Yours finally worked for me. If it makes you feel any better. Oh, the leaf that leaf is not me work the first time. Yeah, I just don't know how to create how she creates that link. I think um, you do one of these, and then I think you paste it. Oh, there you go. Oh. Hey, what's up, Dave? Dave is saying someone go check Facebook. Yeah, Lisa does magic. Probably is. Hi right, guys, give me one second. I, let me just go check something out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tell my wife to look the news. Give me one sec. So I guess for now I'll just put this uh, uh, saw hole on my separate tank right now. Just keep an eye and then you know until I decide what to do with this guy. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's um, Blue Basin here. What's up, Blue? Hey, what's up? What's up, guys? Yeah. Reef Keeper says it's God telling Ash not to put the soul hall in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks like a transformer exploding. That's what I was yeah. just thinking, too. When That's somebody what made a comment on air. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking too. It was some kind of transformer because everything just kind of dimmed and went dark. Like yeah. everything. Yeah, that yeah, looked think... like an electrical storm. Um, Reefkeeper said it's God telling Ash not to put the soul howl in his tank. No, okay. <laughs> now I'll, I'll, I'll take that advice. You know, Alex already <laughs> said it, so definitely. Hey, no, no. Michael Ahrens has like a 300 gallon tank mm -hmm. and his wasn't even like seven or eight inches. Remember, like, look at his logo. Look at Ahrens' Ethereum. <laughs> His logo is a Sohal tank. Sohal and tank, he took yeah. it out when yeah. it, it, it was like six inches because it was so aggressive in his 300 yeah, gallon up, tank. He ended, up, he ended up taking it into a um, zoo or something that near mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm going to I'm gonna probably just return him back. Uh, I'm not going to take chances with my livestock. No way. Uh, not for one fish. Not worth it. If it was a, um, what did they call it? The black... Um, if it was the like a tank, tank, tank or something, tank. You know, or, or, a black tank, or, 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 or a Casper or something like, you know, like I'm risking oh, yeah. it. I'm risking I'll it. In fact, I'd upgrade the tank to keep like a black tank or a gem tank or a Casper. Too bad it's not that, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But I know, eh? Like things could happen. Hey, Mellow Trini, I don't think I've seen you in here before. How you doing, man? Hey, what's up, man? I'm, my name on um, YouTube is Blue Basin. It used to be Rico's Reef before. But, um... Oh, I know that. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Blue Basin now, yeah. All right. Where you, where you, um, where do you live, Blue Basin? Um, oh, I'm, I'm from Dayton, Ohio, but I'm originally from um, Trinidad and Tobago. I know the accent, man. I'm Jamaican, so I know. Okay, okay, what's up, man? Yeah, yeah, I know the accent. Hey, hey, you're gonna appreciate this. Right now, I'm cooking some upstairs, man. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, my wife is from Trinidad. Oh, she that's is? what's up, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you know all about the upstairs, then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You don't, you don't have to be from Trinidad to know about the oxtail, yo. Yeah, yeah Trinity Christmas. Yeah, man. That's what's up. What part of Trinity is she from? Uh, the main know. city, uh, Port of France. Port of Spain. Port of Spain. Port of Spain. Yeah, I'm from Port of Spain too. Yeah, I'm from Lavon until yeah. Port of Spain. Oh yeah, from La oh you know not. I was you know what growing up, I I had a friend who was from Lavantil, and yeah. a place in Lavantil called the Big Tree. 
So I always oh, tell people right. from Love until the big tree, even though I've never been to Trinidad. Oh, that's what's up. <laughs> that's funny. Yes. Well, I went about three years ago. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice place, man. Yeah. yeah. Had a good time. Yeah. So that's, that's a funny story about me growing up. So I don't have much people keeping saltwater fish tanks in Trinidad. So mm -hmm. when, I, when I was little, I used to go fishing, but I used to go catch my own bait and go fish, right? So I used to flip these rocks over and catch these um, little shrimp and go uh, fishing with it. When I got here and start into the hobby, I was like, man, I was fishing with pistol shrimps all this time, man. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Interesting. I, I have like Jamaican friends here that okay. keep fish tanks now, but they've been keeping fish tanks since they were in Jamaica. But you know, you have to, it's really expensive to get equipment. So, you know, here, you know, we, we have such a luxury of like, if a skimmer's not working, we can change a skimmer. But there, you know, in Jamaica, yeah, oh, it's yeah. to get a skimmer, even if it doesn't work properly, like you gotta make that work. Yeah, like it's so hard to get anything else. Yeah, yeah, and it's expensive too, man. It's really, it, you know, you like have to uh, have family members coming down or something, they could bring something for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like so I they don't have legal problems. But with the fish, well. Mostly is the equipment. The equipment side is what's tough down there. You know, you can build a you can build an aquarium, but any other equipment to get in, like for instance, Trinidad, it's the exchange rate is six to one. So one US dollar is six of our dollars. So anything you buy in here, multiply by six. If you go to to collect your own stuff out there, whether you'd go to prison. Oh, um. They, in Trinidad, they don't enforce it that much because we don't have much of a um, coral reef. Like in Tobago, we do, but Trinidad, um, we don't have much coral reefs like that. So they don't really regulate what you collect unless you're trying to send it out of the the, the island. Then there you go get into some trouble. But just going out to the beach and going home with a bucket, no one says nothing to you. Uh, cool. Yeah. A Chris Fish Room, thank you for the super chat. Um, I posted my email address. He said he has a bacterial boom. Um, yeah, so he, I posted my email address. So send me, email me the video. Um, email me or um, I'll text you my number. You can text it to me and I'll take a look at it. In Jamaica it now, in though, in Jamaica now, the last time I went to Jamaica two years ago, you can't take anything. In fact, what you have is you have some European countries. I think some of the Scandinavian countries have donated money to like Jamaica. I think, like, I think, I think I heard that. So I don't know if it's true. But Jamaica does have like rangers that protect the reef. And I remember when I was in Jamaica a couple of years ago, I was like, "Hey, I found the serious snails." Like, and they said, "Listen, man, if you can't get caught with one snail at the airport trying to leave." Like, you're going to get in so much trouble. Like, it doesn't even make sense. He said, not for one snail. He was like, how much is a snail worth? I said, like, two, three dollars. He said, listen, it's not worth it because you get caught with anything. Like, you can't collect from the reefs and like at all. Oh. Yeah, but if somebody walked into your house and said, hey, you've got a beautiful tank, would they come in and, and raid your place? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. No. No, I um, wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm a lot good. of stuff is, in the UK, a lot of stuff is, you know, you're not supposed to have it. But if you're growing it in your own aquarium, like, no. But uh, how, did, how did they know you didn't have it before, like, the ban and you've just been breeding it? How did they know that? Right, right. And I'm like, environment? <laughs> it's, it's sad to say, but environmental, like, Enforcement back home is, is really lax, man, you know. Um, people do basically do what they want down there. I used to be a fisherman when I was like 16, 17, when I was little down there. And, well, the only thing the Coast Guard, we got in trouble one time for is because we took rum from, from Venezuelans for fish. <laughs> and that was legal. That's that's like the only thing the Coast Guard ever bugged us about. Or, or if we go too close to the army base on the um, 
Coast Guard side, but that's it. They never even checked our boat to see what we have in it or nothing like that. And that's like standard practice down there. You guys have reefs down here in Trinidad? No, not 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 really. Tobago does, but Trinidad, not, not really, man. Because it have a, um, it's a small island, and they produce oil, we produce oil, so we have a lot of runoffs and stuff. So the the coastline for to keeping reef is not that good. For so, but tr but Tobago does because the water they have good beaches. Yeah, and they don't they don't produce oil on Tobago, so it's a smaller island, and it's it's they more tourism tourism oriented so they kind of more protective on that side of um, the stuff all right so my wife is from guyana and okay they don't have reefs in guyana because um they have a lot of rivers that dump into run, the coast run off, and, yeah, run and, off, um, yeah. and they get a lot of silt so if you look at like a like a satellite image of like guyana you'll see that the water is like, it takes like until it gets like 300 miles off shore before it starts to get deep because so right. much is coming from in the mountains and gets, you know, so their water um, is so brown. And so, so it's sunlight gets no penetration. So they have no, you know, like it's very productive water fish wise, but there's no reefs. Yeah. Yeah. And you see Trinidad is seven miles off the coast of Venezuela. So we didn't want to run off from, south america too so um it's 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 pretty it's it have a lot of fish like you said but it, it's as far as um the one reef fish i seen abundant when i was down there was basically just the made um the sergeant majors that's we used to catch those all day long <laughs> you know and that that's it pretty much um when i was in jamaica i saw I, sergeant majors we saw a lot of those in I, I, yeah that's the damselfish is that the yeah. the damsel the multicolored damselfish yeah I, yeah I saw a lot of the the blue tangs the caribbean blue tangs yeah yeah they got a lot of those too yeah yeah i saw a lot of those um i saw you know what interestingly those little really tiny i forgot what they're called but the two color angel fish like we saw a lot of those when I was in Jamaica. I don't know if they call okay. them light color angel fish or what, but saw a lot of those. A lot, a lot of those. Um, okay. There were a lot of fish, but I didn't. Um, you know, I didn't. I didn't recognize too much, but yeah, I didn't. Sergeant Major, um, the the blue tang, and definitely of, the little uh, angel. And, and a lot of pirate fish too. Like the, they call them doctor fish back home, but it's basically the big ras. You know what? Is that what they call Dr. Fish this whole time? Yeah. Because, yeah. Oh. It's a giant ras, yeah. Uh, I was watching a documentary. Um, what I th was watching a documentary on YouTube, and I saw where it says, like, you know, in the Bahamas and certain areas of the Caribbean, like about 80% of all the sand is produced by, like, the parrotfish chewing up rock and, like, basically crapping it out. Yeah, it's a ras. <laughs> That's what it is. It's yeah. basically a coral eating ras. It's a lot of safe ras. Yeah. That's basically what it is. I All this time, I, so you know what? As a kid growing up in Jamaica, they would talk about the doctor fish so much. And it's I never connected the dots because I didn't, I, I wasn't interested in the quick. I came here at 14, so I wasn't interested in. Right, right. You know, like aquariums at all. But I used to hear people talk about the doctor fish all the time. So now you say um, doctor fish. Well, well, they 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 said doctor fish with two fish: the ras and the the dark blue. Um, what you call it? Um, tangs, the big tangs, the blue tangs. They the call those tank. yeah. They call those doctor fish back home too. Yeah. yeah. Love seeing love seeing the the nice Caribbean blue tangs. Love those. Mm -hmm. um, Ash left. I think he said he has to go acclimate his fish. Okay. Uh, so thank you for joining, Ash. Carlos. Hey, Carlos. How you doing? Um, Reef God. What's up, Reef God? Thank you. Big up. Oh, um, let me see if I missed anyone. Reef Eco. Hello, Reef Eco. I don't think I've ever seen Reef Eco before. Let me just see. Um, that's a new name I haven't seen around in any live stream. So um, thank you for joining, Reef Eco. Or maybe it's just like... Mellow Trini. It's a new <laughs> <Change> name. <laughs> yeah, it's a new name. 
It's oh, okay. Body. Reef God said he used to eat Oct Dr. Fish. Reef God, definitely a yardy. Definitely a yardy. <laughs> so, so you say you used to eat Dr. Fish. You probably still eat it now. You know, when you go to one of them restaurants and get Escovitch fish or so, you probably, I don't know, you're probably getting Dr. Fish somewhere. What kind of, so tell us a little bit about your tank, um, Blue blue Carbon, right? What, why do I feel like, you know what? Oh, Blue Carbon. Blue, what do you, what do you say your YouTube name again? Uh, it's Blue Basin. Blue Basin. Let me just make sure I'm subscribed. Tell us a little bit about your tank in the meanwhile, though. Oh, which one? <laughs> How many tanks do you have? Well, right now I have this one behind me, which is the, um, let me see if I can get a bit of view on it. Um, it's a 125 display. Um, I really got nothing in this one right now. Um, I had some brown clove polyps took over, so I took all my rock to the local fish store. And the guy was, he said, you can give me back rock for the clove polyps or whatever. I just gave him all my rock. So I got like five bucket of rock to put back in here. And um, this link to downstairs to a 40 gallon frag tank, and then it goes to 125 frag tank, and then it goes to a 75 um, sump. But um, I'm now starting to dial back stuff in. I really, um, I kind of, I kind of was lazy on everything for a little bit. So um, now I'm starting to get back into everything. I, I got about, besides these two little clownfish here, I got about nine more pairs downstairs on a separate system that I breed clownfish with. Um, so, yeah, that's basically what, what I do right now. Is that a doctor fish you got there? Or that's a... That's a <laughs> uh, no, no, that's a, um, a this Johnny I have. He's getting too big for the tank now. He's uh, That's one of the first fish I got. He was like tiny when I got him. This tank been running nonstop now for, what's that? 10 years now. So he's been in the tank. Almost all the fish in here been in the tank for 10 years except the pajama um, cardinals. Do, with that fish that's going through the middle now, what fish, is that a saltwater beta you have? Yeah, 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 yeah. What? I yeah, just... everyone, everyone is be like, man, oh, that's the first beta. I so see just be hanging out in the middle, man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I know there's saltwater betas, but I I just recognize the tail flowing and know that sort of pattern. Yeah. How long have you had him in there? Oh, I had him about nine years now. Yeah, he's been in there a long, long time. Does he bother anything? No. Well, he he will eat anything that's small, basically smaller than my smallest clownfish. He'll eat any fish that's little. But he don't really, besides that, he don't really harass anything else. All right. Yeah. What light is that? Is that, someone said, is that, a, are those AI souls? Yeah, that's old school souls, man. <laughs> so, so blues. I have, I have like 11 of them in all. I got some downstairs too. Um, but they started to die out now. So I've been, um, what you call it? Um, I, I contacted AI and they told me, they sent me a, a link to send them in. So I got to print off the codes and send them in. They're going to say if they can fix them or if they can, um, or they're gonna give me a discount on new ones, but I don't know what the discount gonna be. But I mean, ooh, I like <laughs> souls. yeah, so blues, man. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? I think, um, you know what? Than from Tidal Gardens, I think yeah, he has he a video on his channel where his friend set up a tank and use like a very nice tank. I think from time to time, even um, Than goes over there and buy corals from the guy. The guy uses Soul Blue. So oh, he, was, yeah. like he has like a bank of them and they're really close together. Um, yeah. Over the tank. But yeah, he uses Soul Blues. And I think Than says he loves the colors that the Soul Blues put off. Yeah, I, I like the color on it too. Like these, um, I had six on there before, but it was too much. I think I thought it was too much light. So I took two off and they're just sitting downstairs. But with six, it's, it's pretty, pretty bright. Yeah. And you're controlling it with what, a director or you have the little controller? No, I have one of these. Uh, 
I got this one right here. It's one of the. It's gonna bring out like the little controller, the AI controller, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this little, this little guy. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. That is real. Look at that. That looks like like <laughs> one of the first iPods. Yep. Yep. Yeah, man. It's I, it's. I love it, man. It's it's so it's it plugs right into the whole unit and it controls all of them, man. So. Yeah, Dic Dicanthus Reef says the cyan LED that the soul has gives it a very unique look. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's um, I can um. Yeah. What kind of do you what, do you breed any interesting clowns? Like, is it just is it fancy clowns? Um, right now the well, I have light. I got two pairs of lightning, and I have um a mocha. I have a pair of mocha. I have um, what you call it? Um, two pairs of Wyoming whites. And what's the other pairs I got? I got another pair of regular clowns downstairs who are actually born in this house and they breed it now. Um, Any um, gold nuggets? I had a gold nugget, but he jumped, unfortunately. Um, I was trying to do a gold nugget and a lightning maroon to see if I could get like a gold lightning, but the, um, the female keep um, beating him up and he j actually jumped. And, the mochas uh, are really nice. Yeah, I got a pair of um, mochas. Um, they're breeding right now. They don't have any eggs right now, but they're breeding right now, yeah. I got a um, pair of uh, Da Vinci, grade A Da Vinci's. That's what I got, too. Um, I, I don't think mine's is grade A, but I have a pair of Da Vinci's, too. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's a lot of money in fish there you got, but... Yeah. And, and who do you sell to when you breed clownfish? Just stores or just other hobbyists? I got I got some local stores around here. I'm actually like 10 minutes away from Lazy. And they have this other place here called um, Corals Galore. That's, um, what should they change the name to Aquatics Galore now? And I usually sell it to Aquatics Galore. Okay. Um, yeah. So Murphy is not too far from you because Murphy talks to knows Lazy. Yeah, Murphy is about an hour away from me. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not that close, but it's yeah. Like I saw him at Lazy on a random one time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. See yeah. in in New York when you go in an hour, like literally could be ten miles on the map. I'm pretty sure where you at when you go in an no, hour. No, an hour. hour is on the on the highway, sixty miles an hour. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> when I'm going, like if I'm going to Dave, it'll take like an hour, but it's like. Mostly traffic. You're seriously only going like maybe 10 miles on the map. 10, okay. 15 miles on the map, but it's not that far, you know? Yeah, it's no, not here. Yeah, it's easy. Actually, let me um let me go check my ox tails. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> hey, what's up, Billy? What up? What's up, Billy Pipes? All right, man. Chilling. Just hanging out, chatting. Um, Ace is here. Hasn't seen hey, Ace Billy. in a while. What up, Asa, young man? Not much. I'm laid up in bed sick, so I'm just going to watch. That's it. Hey, Reef God. Um, Reef God, I know we've done sort of these kind of... I got a, I got a gold nugget clown that's getting real aggressive in my tank. Um, I tried pairing him up, and he always ends up killing whoever I pair him up with. So he's not fully gold yet. But a gold nugget clown is like a maroon clown. So it's the aggressive. Oh, he said he's addicted to them. All right, man. So you know what? Text me, Reef God. I will um text me. You got I think you got my number. Yeah, we'll tomorrow, got my number. yeah, text me. You still got my number. So shoot me a text. Um yeah, shoot me a text. Yeah, I still got your number. And then three nine zero two, right? All right. All right, I'll, I'll shoot you a text, and um, and um, yeah, maybe um, because he's today I tried to clean my glass and he was just biting the heck out of me. Um, and I also have just regular clownfish that are my first ever saltwater fish I bought, and I'm not gonna let this guy bully them. So, so Billy, man, what's going on? Tell us a little. What's what's, what's going on with you, Billy? Not much. I think I figured out my tank issue. 
Oh, oh, oh. Did you, so, is, it, possibly. Is, it, is it easily correctable? Uh, we'll see. We're going to see what happens. So, I, I, you know, I, I use two-part. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, when I mixed a new batch, I didn't dose and then test, dose and then test. I just been dosing the same. Like I haven't tested every day like I usually do. So I realized that the new batch is stronger. So if I dose, I used to dose 16 mils a day. Now I'm dosing like nine. Mm -hmm. So by dosing those 16 mils a day was bringing my alkalinity up higher than my tank likes. So hopefully that's what it is. And I can fix it. And, and How oh, high is your alk? Uh, like eight four. And before it, yeah. and before that, like seven seven to eight. And it made that much of a difference. Oh yeah. Wow. Yep. I mean, we'll see. If that's what it is. But yeah, I've I've tried to get my coral to like eight five. No, that never liked it. So. You know what it is, Billy? I think it's that octo, man. I think you just got to get them out of there. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll hold them for you for, uh, for a while. There's almost nothing left of them right now. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's yep. Tough. They're taking the hit, too. But we'll see, you know. We'll see how it goes. Hey, um... Oh, you were talking about the Kalkwasser. Um, mm -hmm. Now, a lot of I know a lot of people they they put their Kalkwasser in the ATO, but you know sometimes like the ATOs just go crazy and they start pumping water. How, how do you control like your the amount of alkalinity or or Kalkwasser that's going in your system if you know if your ATO decides to like just go nuts? So I actually, that's one of the reasons why I don't um, put Kalkwasser in my ATO. So it varies from season to season. Like, for instance, like, I don't know what happened, but you see I'm a little bit stuffy. But it seems this winter, the uh, my apartment, I, I don't know if they, they recently, like, redid our windows. It's really dry inside. Like, I think the humidity is, like, 20%, 21%. So, but basically what I'm trying to say is in the summer, I tend to use fans sometimes and a chiller to control, you know, temperature, but from season to season, my evaporation varies so much depending on different factors that it affects how much top off I pump. So that's why I do not use my ATO to dose Kalkwasser at all. I gave that up years ago. Like it took me... Like, you know, when summer came around and I put fans on my tank, my evaporation went up. I ended up overdosing the tank. Yes. So what I do now exclusive is I actually um, use like a dosing pump. I mix up Kalkwasser yes. to its maximum um, saturation, let it settle, and then use a dosing pump. And a dosing pump, like, you know, like you'll, you know, come on, Alex. Urgh. And basically, so you just, um, I'll say, hey, over the next day, um, like I use the BRS dosing pumps and I will say, you know, from 12, from 8 midnight to 8 in the morning, you know, every 15 minutes, come on for five minutes and dose, you know, like this. So I, I, that's what I do with, I think that's the safest way to do call quasser. Just mix up, you know, a batch and put it on a dosing pump and have a dosing pump deliver it. That's a lot easier yeah. than ATO. Yeah but, how, yeah, but how do you know how much you're dosing though? Well, it's Those just like blind. any two part. Just like any two part, it's a trial and error. Like you have to just test every day. Like you know, um, just test every day and just see. So I know, like when I did my thing, I was dosing, you know, x amount of mils per day. So I would test at ten o'clock today. No, I would dose overnight and then test at ten o'clock the next day. So there's no like magic you know way to like know like hey how much to dose. You just estimate. And shoot for under the number. It's better to undershoot than overshoot. And just, you know, try. And then the next day, if you see it's dropping, up your dosing a little bit more until you hold it steady at where, you know, you need to hold it. Yeah, I, I really, exclusive, I really don't. I mean, 
people have done it. If you have a temperature controlled house where you know you have central AC and you run AC all the time, and your your temperature inside is like a nice steady, you know, um, you know, steady number, like it's seventy eight, whether it's winter or summer, then you can use Kalkwasser, you know. But I don't. For me, there's just too many variables. Someone is asking, is there a calculator on BRS to know how much Kalkwasser? I know there is for two part, but I don't know for Kalkwasser. So um, let me let me um, let me check BRS calculators. Um, let me yeah, exclusive. I'm, I'm checking BRS calculators now. I don't think it would be because. Hmm, yeah, there's not. Yeah, I was um, I was asking a question on Facebook this week about um, my raising my alkalinity, and I told them on BRS they said no more than one point four uh, uh, dKH a day, and everyone on Facebook was telling me that calculator is off. I don't know why. You know what? It. You know what? If your alkalinity. Like if you've tested, like I think I've tested before, my alkalinity was like five. I don't remember yeah. what I did. Yeah, if your I, alkalinity is five, it's best for you to just get it where it needs to be and okay. just deal with the consequences rather than but if it's off by one DKH, like slowly raise it. But if your if your animals are in like a, a bad range where they need help. I wouldn't continually stress them out by like bringing it up. Bring slow. up slow, right? I, I still wouldn't go. I still wouldn't go from like six to like ten in one day, but right. you know, one DKH a day. Um, wow. Yeah. The, the, wow. the other thing. The other thing about the BRS. Sorry to cut you off. About the BRS stuff is, um, it really depends on how you mix it up. Like because you know, like like some of the instructions are, hey, put three quarters of a gallon. And if your measurements are off and you put a little bit more, then your solution might be stronger or a little bit weaker than Mixed someone else okay. making up, mixing up. So it's not going to be exact. Like if you get ESV and ESV is like a standard solution that, that a company pre-mixes, so it's always the same consistency. So, you know, we're not all Billy Pipes. And I always make fun of Billy for this because Billy is so meticulous with when he measures. Like, Billy's the person who's going to measure and say, no, I need to make sure this is 750 milliliters. Like, not me. I'm just going to fill the jug and be like, oh, that looks like three quarters of a jug. Um, I'm not that precise. So, you know, sometimes you have to take into account the fact that, you know, um, it's not that accurate. Plus, we're not really sure what our t like. My tank technically is a seventy-one gallon display, but again, I'm not sure. My How much water? Are. Like this <laughs> again. I'm gonna make fun of Billy again. Like when Billy was filling this tank. He measured and knew how many bucks. So when he filled this tank, he knows like, okay, you know. it took me sixty-five point eight gallons to. I was on the phone with him when he was filling, and he was like, he was filling. He was like, okay, I've put forty-two gallons already, and I need to know how much it takes to get this. So we're not all like Billy pipes. Like I'm, not, you know what? Like he's that precise with his measurements. But I'm estimating that hey, this is a seventy-one gallon display, fifteen gallons in the sump. Take away the fifteen gallon sum. So whenever I'm doing calculations, I'm like, all right, I got seventy gallons, and I don't mess around. You know, like I could be off. So the fact that you mix the solution could be a little bit off, and your tank calculator could be a little bit off. Yes, That's right. why you know when you're using the BRS calculator, your stuff could be like a little bit, you know, off. It's not going to be precise. Right. But right. You should be off by like you know ten percent or so. It's not going to make a big difference. Okay, because um, when I tested mine the other day, uh, on the 20th, I was at 5.8, and um, I've been slowly bringing it up, and I tested it lunchtime today, and it was at 8.4, and I think I want to stay around there, um, and I'm dosing about 100, I'm dosing 100 mLs throughout the whole day, because um, my tank is on a, my frag tank is on the same system downstairs, which is the same size as this one, and it, it, the, the light cycle is, re, is reversed. So at nighttime, my frag tank stays lit, lit all night and off in the daytime. So um, saying I'm going to dose my alk at night doesn't really matter. So I just set it to dose 
um, five mLs a day, five mLs an hour for, um, well, no, five mLs, 5.5 mLs, the first five minutes of every hour for 18 hours. And mm -hmm. I live like that. And um, it's that been right. It's worked, yeah, it's working now, because I, I, I've been testing twice a day, my alkalinity twice a day now, and it's 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 increasing a little bit, so I'm gonna dial it back down a little bit to keep it around 8.4. I think I'm going to, you know, with Triton, they recommend you keep it at natural seawater level, which is about seven, but okay. I suffer from low pH, so, um, I've been, um, I've been just, um, you know, raising my alk to, to see if I can keep my pH higher. Today, actually, okay. I, if you look at my screen now, my pH looks really out of whack. That's because today I was trying to kill some Aptasia and I, okay. used, I used calc paste and boy, I went crazy, like killing Aptasia. And then my pH just went from 7.8 to 8.4. <laughs> okay. I mixed up some calc paste. Like, so to people, if you have sensitive SPS, which I don't, if you're going to use calc paste or anything like that to kill Aptasia, like, be careful. Like, I've heard the warnings from Dave and everyone, but for some reason, I didn't heed the warning. But yeah, if you're going to do calc paste, like, just be, look at that spike there. Like, it went yep. from, at 2.45, it was at, at 2 o'clock, it was at 7.4. I started messing with it at 2.30. At 2, yep, 2.30 was at 8. And then 3.15, <laughs> 4 o'clock when I was done killing Aptasia, it was at 8.4. <laughs> but that shows you the power of Kalkwasser because, you know, um, and in the past when I've been able to, I know BRS did their tests where they showed that, you know, your tank actually has more consumption when, you have a higher pH, and I've seen in the past, like I get more growth out of my tank in the summers because I keep the windows open and my pH tends to run, you know, 8.2, 8.3 range. So, okay. Yeah, um, Kyle Quasser, um, so just to bring it back to exclusive, yeah, if you want to experiment with Quasser, man, like if you um, make sure you have something that monitors pH. So if your pH goes, you know, too high, you can always shut off your ATO. And um, also um, start out with like, I think the most you can do is two teaspoons per gallon. Like start with half a tablespoon per gallon and just work your way up until you get to where you need to go. Yeah, I got, a, I got other issues right now going on. Um, no, I just finished a diet, Tom Bloom. I had to turn off my lights completely because they were just like, my water was turning brown. So I, I killed my water to the, yesterday, um, and I, I started ca um, carbon in the tank as well, cleaned everything up. It's, it's actually gone in like a day and a half, but it, I've had it since last week. So I think I was like towards the end of it, um, but my, my phosphates are at zero, so I need to find a way to bring them back up now. Your phosphates are at zero. Yeah. And right. my nitrates are at like five. All right. Um, that's not too far. You know what, man? Just feed a little bit more. If you have a refugium, just run the refugium less. If you have a skimmer, just, you know, skim a little bit drier. Don't, you know, try not to add anything to raise phosphates yet. Just, you know, just feed a little bit more. Yeah, I feed a lot, man. <laughs> you know? And it's still zero? Yeah, it's still zero. And right. I, I, I skim very dry. And what, um, have, you have a refugium on that tank? I do not. I have a um, what? Are, what are those? Those uh, drops? The one point two drop? So they're like the oh, scrubber. the algae scrubber. Yeah, the yeah. algae scrubber. Well, probably just put that on a timer and just run it for less hours per day. Yeah, but like you, but right. It's I'm sorry, cut you off. It's still not pulling anything because it's so new and I don't have anything in the tank yet. I mean, I have very little things going on in the tank that. It's it's still like white the inside, so it's not even turning brown yet. So it's not actually doing anything right now. All right, so don't worry about. It. Okay, I, all I'm saying is just don't dose anything to bring it up yet. Like you know, the tank is still relatively new, so you know. Um, and I think from from 
I know I, I, Greg hasn't joined yet, but I think from what I've heard from people, if your nutrients are that low, you just have to feed the corals a little bit more, maybe reef chili, and then maybe give them amino acids. But, um, you know, don't go ahead and, um, use you know, source. Dose, yeah, dose anything to bring phosphates up. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to feed. I mean, I already feed a lot as is because I I do reef chili, um, reef roids for the cor for the corals that I have the four corals that I have right now. Um, I have an order coming in tomorrow. You saw, I sent you that pitch arrived that Picasso, a can. Yeah, you did, man. Yeah, I got that coming in hopefully tomorrow. Um, but the funny thing is after and I'm using Fritz salt after I do a, a water change. I'm talking about like. 30 40 percent water change the second one that i did and i checked my elk and it's still like 5.5 to 6. doesn't go higher than six which is nuts that's it yep that's it that's interesting that it all goes up interesting okay all right let me see what's going on in the chat um i think rip posted a calquaser calculator um I tried putting in some numbers, Rip, and it seems to work. Like, I'll have to play with that a little bit more. But um, it looks like, you know, uh, it looks like it's worth taking a look at, at ha hamzareef.com. And he posted a link. Um, let me post the link again. Um, yeah, because it's a little further up. But that is a Kalkwasser, um, a Kalkwasser. Kalkwasser calculator to try to calculate how much calc you should dose. Um, Reef God said he hasn't tested for nine months. Ah, can't, I can't, I can't. We call that the mad dog method around here because mad dog doesn't test. So, um, yeah, there's a reason we call him the mad dog, man. Um, chimp the reefer. My nudies are getting hungry. All right, so feed the nudies. Um, and Dicanthus is saying um, he's going to start culturing Aptasia to try to kill them. Hey, um, I don't know, man. I think it came on on a frag, and it just got out of control. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm actually thinking of getting a copper band butterfly back. Um, yeah, because it's just, it's just my Aptasia just got out of control, man. Um, yeah, I, I just bought Aptasia X and Joe's Juice. And today I tried Kalkwasser um, solution to try and kill them. So I'll, I'll let you guys know how each one has worked out. Um, someone is saying nudies work great for Kalkwasser, for, for, for um, Atasia. Hmm, interesting. I do have a lot of Rasses, so, um, but I'd be interested to try a nudie. Um, Dicanthus, if you were in New York, man, I could definitely give you some Atasia. Definitely. Definitely. All right. All right. Billy, you're quiet. Very quiet, Billy. How's uh, life treating you? I said you're quiet. Uh, Are you working in the basement? Yeah. <laughs> Painting a canopy. Your canopy? No, tease. Ah. Uh, is it can we see or it's it's only for uh for eyes only no yeah, hold on. yeah. i'm rolling this one spot hold on Been there in a couple minutes oh wait so i just got a um diamondback goby and i hate this guy he just made a complete mess in my fish tank oh that's the one that put sand on everything yeah, so he he started digging into a hole. So I'm like, okay, fine. But and then he started picking up shells that I had for my crabs, my red leg crabs, and he started poking all the holes that are on top. And he starts grabbing the sand and putting that on top of the rocks. Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to catch this guy to get him out of here now because I can't stand it. He's driving me nuts. Yeah, that's what that's what they do. That's absolutely what they do. Um, I've seen them in action. <laughs> I have so, seen uh, them in so, action. So, oh, it, it, did you not like me cleaning my skimmer? Um, I, I don't know what that was, man. That looks like human. Uh, I might have to take a snack after this, Alex. So, um, 
How does that smell, Alex, though? You know, Alex, that, I, that wish I, could, I, I wish I could have transmitted it, you know, because I hadn't cleaned it in a week, and usually I do twice a week. It was, it was lovely. Okay. As far as skimmers go, it was just lovely. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. If, let's say, you know, you were on an extended business trip, and your wife needed to go down and clean your skimmer, would she? No. Okay. <laughs> Even when I have them, I mean, I've in the past I've let it go two weeks. I mean, as far as I know, it'll it'll still keep doing its thing. It it just pulls a little bit more when it's cleaned. Uh, you don't think of ever getting like a skimmer swabby or designing one? Uh, I have, but at the same time, I've kind of I don't know. I've been in this hobby so long, and like, there's just some things that I like to do. That I, you know, I'm getting my hands on it every week or a couple so, times a week. It so kind of forces saying, me to look at things. You're saying you like to clean the skimmer cup. Is that what you're basically saying? Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Okay. Sorry, Alex. Like we're gonna, we're 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 not gonna see eye to eye on that one. Hey, if you make it out here for Rap Chicago, you know I could save it so that you can experience it. Well, if you come over to visit, I, I listen. I have no problems cleaning my own <laughs> skimmer cup. I don't know if I want to clean sixteen hundred gallon tank skimmer cup. Come on, it'll be fun. Yeah, Everybody's fun. doing it. It's all part of husbandry. Mm -hmm. It's all part of husbandry. Hey, listen, your idea and my idea of fun are two absolute. <laughs> um. So yeah. So Greg is saying, add a little caulk powder to the skimmer cup after cleaning. And it won't stink. You know what's funny is that, I mean, this one stunk a little bit, but because I do it a couple times a week, a lot of times it, it never really smells that bad, surprisingly. Okay. I'm I'm going I'm to I'm take your word for it, all right? Hey, Lisa, can you post a link before you go? I know Lisa said she'd be right back. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to try. Tank is looking good, Alex. We've got some comments that says the tank is looking good. Yeah, there's a well, there's a little cyano, but other than that, everything seems to be doing pretty good. I gotta I gotta do some fragging on a few things pretty soon. Dicam will um, will vibrant kill uh, cyano? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I won't dose anything in this system to kill cyano. It wouldn't be cost effective. I have been hearing so much about Vibrant in the last, like, it's amazing what? how, yeah, like, I know Psychedelic Babe did a thing with Vibrant. It's just, you know, it's just, um, I've been using it for three years. Vibrant. I've been using it for three years. To to manage algae? Like, people use oh, it to what? manage algae. I don't think you use it to manage algae. Have you ever seen algae in my tank? Okay, but so is that why you use it? You use it so you don't get algae. I had, I had like, diatoms that I just could not get rid of on the sand. Mm -hmm. And Dave's LFS said, try this, man. A lot of, we use it on a lot of our tanks for service. And I'll never stop using it. Whether I see even this tank upstairs, day one, vibrant every week. All right. All right. Billy, every Billy, how much are dosing? Uh, one mil per ten gallons. I hear you. I'm just saying. I've been just been hearing a lot about it lately. Um, vibrant. I'm trying to do this late, Greg. Give me a second. All right. So one mil per ten gallons. So what's the math on that for me? <laughs> well, if you want to get rid of algae and cyano, it's, is it worth it? That's what you got to think of. Eh, generally, my own, you know, like I get it in a few places on the sand, and more than likely all I got to do is go in and stir up the sand over there. Yeah. So the, the normal high flow areas or most of them, 
get stirred up by the starfish and the cucumbers, so. Matter of fact, I've been using it as like an indicator for my DI cartridges a little bit. When uh, I start to see an uptick in cyano, it's generally time to, to swap out some DI because a little extra TDS is getting through. I'm trying to find um, Greg's. Might be a little noisy for a second. All right. Hey, Greg, I just emailed you two links. I hope one of those works. Where's the god of tits and wine? Oh, I can't hear it. I said that out loud. What'd you say? Um, um, <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not going to repeat it. You're going to repeat just, that again? Nope. Absolutely not. It's a family friendly show. It's a family friendly show, so I'm not going to repeat that. All right, I am sending the link to Greg. I hope those links work for you, Greg. Yep, texted you the links. The hawkfish is cool, yeah, it is. Hey, Tim, Alex, Tim is asking, how's your 21 tails doing? What's a twenty-one? What's your twenty-one tails? Is that a fish? I, I am. I'm waiting. I don't think Alex hearing us. Uh, Dave said he's 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 watching a marathon of Game of Thrones. So. Ta talking to talking to mute here. It's the, it's the torch coral right here. Oh, why this is this called twenty-one tails? I don't know. That's what that's what Cherry Corals calls it. So that's what I'm calling it. Wait so a Cherry Corals call it the Twenty One Tails Torch. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's it's doing pretty good. It's got like I want to say it's got like three heads or so started on it. It's just start. It's just starting to get going. It it really has been liking the high flow. What color is it? Uh, it's it's basically like gold and yellow, I guess you can call it. Is it 300 bucks? Wait, 300 bucks for that thing? Yeah, I know. I just pulled it up. Damn, you didn't pay that, did you? No. Whoa. No. No, he didn't. <laughs> Alex, Alex has the hookup. No, he didn't. Well, if you got it from there, that's how much you paid. I, 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 I. Have I mentioned that I know the owners of Cherry yeah. Corals and used yeah. to work with them, and one was a customer of mine? <laughs> Back so, in the day. so then, what'd you pay for it? I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it but, wasn't cheap let, because let's, if, they, if they give it let's, to you for a super good discount, they're losing money. And they, yeah. uh, not if when I frag off of it, they get the first the first shot at. So. <laughs> That's if it survives. What's the what's the yellow encrusted and stuff above it? Uh which <laughs> which one? <laughs> One's closest to it. That one? Yeah. So that is, even though it doesn't look all that, um, it's a worldwide corals uh rainbow monty. Okay, it looks it looks totally yellow from me from my from here. Yeah, and then the, the one that's directly behind it is a bubblegum digi, and then there's a forest fire digi, and then the, the satosa there. Okay. And then that's the that's a crazy tea monopora there. Okay. What size tank is that? Uh, this one's 480. Woo! <laughs> there you go. Uh, let me... They back up, and then the, the big brother is next to it. That one's 720. Man. So explain the differences between the two, Alex. As far as reef, 
full full on reef tank with pretty much all fully reef safe fish except for the melanaris. And then this is more of a fish only tank, although it will get more corals eventually, but I keep my my puffers. Uh, fish like the harlequin tusk, clown trigger, big uh, Spanish hog, a Caribbean staple. Uh, and I, I keep all my angels in this tank too. So, it's a couple soft corals in here. Eventually, I might upgrade the lighting and try to put some SPS in here once this tank grows out eventually which will probably take quite a while but they're they're both plumb together they they go into my fish room to my my first stage sump my refuge tank and then my last stage sump to the return which it goes up and over and then back here and i i built these tanks they're made out of plywood Okay, okay. Man, those are nice, man. Hey, just um just finishing up on something we were talking about earlier. So exclusive, there was a fire at a Con Ed substation in Queens. So that's why we saw that bright blue. blue. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You see a lot of people called in and was like, um, yeah, it was from Queens. So there's a fire, so the world isn't ending. Yeah, because it wasn't oh, just aliens. a flash. It was a long illumination. Yeah. Um, a chance, and I think from what I've heard is they still haven't put out the blaze yet. All right. All right. Apollo cool, 13 thanks. skimmer. So that that's kind of a synopsis of my system. So, Alex, so if I make it to Reef of Palooza, like, next year, Chicago... Um, and your tank is like fully, almost fully grown out by then. Like, am I, you know, some frags? Because you know, I'd make it out there for some frags. Yeah, if I got if I got some ready. I mean, my hope is early this year to get a little frag tank going. So wait, what do you mean if you have some ready? I'm not sure I'm following that. Well, it's just I I don't have anything trimmed at the moment. So yeah, but if if yeah, Green from Palooza is next year, man. Like, there's a lot of time to have a trim. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I'll, 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 I, I, I got to install a frag tank here because I, I won't put trays of plugs in here. All right, so I'm going to keep – every time you show your tank and you tell the name of stuff, I'm just going to keep a running list. I, I will work that's, that, that's the one you really – you told me you really wanted there was that – the softy here, the – Huh? Uh, uh, what the heck do, is it called? Stereoneptia. Is that light blue, like a – uh, it just looks that color. This is the one that actually looks a little yellow. Oh, it's yeah. It, it looks like a, um, a carnation coral, but it's photosynthetic. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. And your urchin looks like he's picking up a bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah. I got to re-glue frags all the time. I I just don't have it in me to, to take this bugger and put him into the big tank because uh, the puffers might eat him. I actually like this guy. Oh yeah, what does he have? Like a chalice hat there? Uh it's an old it's a, a clam. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, down south reefer saying, Alex, do you do water changes? The in the year and a half this tank has been up, then I've probably changed a total of about two hundred gallons of water. The largest single water change was a hundred gallons. So yes, barely. <laughs> but that's out of a total of what? What's your water water volume? Uh, sixteen hundred is the rough estimate. It's probably closer to seventeen. So not really doing much in the way of water changes. That's not a water change. That's that's replacing evaporation, huh? <laughs> uh, no, e e evaps about. So my my top off tanks are over here. So 
I go and I do top off my wife's tank and that's a couple of gallons, but it's usually about 20 to 40 gallons of RO a week I go through. Some, okay. of, that's for, some of that's for, uh, you know, mixing. I do a little bit of manual dosing with strontium and potassium. And then if I, if I take something out or I got to do a little correction to salinity, but that's pretty rare that I have to do that. When he got about a strontium te test and it's quite low, I think it was about four, so it should be about eight. Yeah, mine, I, I haven't really been dosing full strength on it. The same with potassium, like they both test low and I know strontium especially is not a great, it's not the most accurate kit in the world, but since I started dosing the potassium and the strontium, like that little that acro that's kind of in the center with some little branches going off of that. That's all new in like the last couple of months since I started dosing that. So a few of these acros have actually started to take off a little bit. So I think that's, you know, I don't, since I don't do a lot of water changes, I got to make up for some of that mineral depletion and the calcium reactor alone's not doing it. Okay. All right, all right. Looking good, man. Looking good. See, I, I, actually, I'm surprised you go through only 20 gallons a week on that big system of top-up. All about humidity control. Mm. You don't want it too low or too, too high. You got to keep it just right. Because we are running. So humidity... The high today was 64%. We're only running at 52% right now. Is that a good number? Yep. Uh, beyond 70 is where I get nervous, but that's a 24-hour scale, and it only creeps up after uh, the lights and the fans go out at night. So it's not there very long. And As a lot of people know, I have my quote-unquote Dexter ceiling that's plastified, so... I, I do quite a bit to keep my humidity under control. <coughs> Good stuff, Alex. Good stuff. It is 1017, just letting everyone know. I'm shutting it down at 1030, so in about 12 minutes. Um, sorry, couldn't go longer tonight, guys. Just got some stuff to take care of. Um, yes, yes. Um, Rip, I saw the Dexter ceiling. Um, I didn't miss that. Just I wasn't sure how many people are fans of Dexter. Um, Murphy's Aquatics, thank you for the super chat. Real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance, Confucius. And yes, Murphy, <laughs> I know I don't know anything because I've screwed up my I've screwed up my tank so many times that I can tell you what not to do. It's sort of like reverse psychology. So like, don't mess with your tank. Don't install a new return pump before you go on vacation. Don't just swap out Zeovit and put Triton on. Like, I could tell you. I could drop some knowledge on you. So thank you for that, uh, Murphy. I really appreciate that. Um, down south, can I have some of your money, Alex? Um, sure, he's giving it away. Yeah, he just sent me a whole briefcase the other day. It was, Thanks, yeah. Alex, by the way. <laughs> uh, but if it, it's any consolation, just understand a lot of this is all diy so there was a significant cost savings in that oh, yeah. yep and yep. i spent two years building this just to get it built before i could even think about stocking so it's just a slow slow process i remember when you were building that well i don't remember when you built the base but i remember when you were putting on the top and I remember I did some research on, hey, like, how much would a skimmer cost? And <laughs> I think you, I was looking at the biggest I saw was for like a six to 800 gallon system, and it was over $1,000. So that skimmer would have been uh, what, two or three grand? A skimmer to get this size system that's heavily loaded would be about three to $5,000 US easily. Yep. Jeez. So I, I built mine for significantly less. Yep. Um, yeah, listen, I we can't do it tonight. Here's your canopy, yo. If um, my canopy, you're building me a canopy? Ooh, oh, that's a red 
It's a red sea the... reefer canopy. It'll fit. No. Oh, okay. Thanks. I don't baby. think you can put a canopy on those tanks, can you? Uh, I don't think so. But the next tank, I will. Um, yeah, I was saying. Let me just finish up. Um, I think I have a couple of streams. I might edit it out, but where Alex goes over his entire tank and how he built everything, um, the plywood tanks, how he built it, like it's amazing. But I, I'm most impressed though with it, with the way he heats the tank with the heat exchanger. Like to me, that's like the cleverest little piece of engineering that Alex did on that tank. Very impressed. I think a few people now are doing that. I know, I think uh, Blue Carbon um, has a heater exchange, and I think uh, Tristan has one also. Yeah, but Alex is not first. Mistaken. Oh, yeah. Of, of course. course, yeah. No, no, I'm not taking anything away. I'm just saying. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't my That's idea. I found, a, I found a freshwater guy that did it, and I just documented what he did. And there's a few different ways. Some people are using packed coils. Some people are using titanium heat exchangers. They both work. Hey, we, all, we all stand on the shoulder of giants. So, Hey, Billy, so we were looking at the sump, man. What happened? I, I, I thought you were done. I don't know. Yeah, but we, you could give us a quick tour of that sump. What, you want to see the sump? Yeah. It's for sale. After Palooza, everything down here is going again. Once a year. Huh? Yeah, every year. Palooza, New York? Build a system, sell it. Build a system, sell it. Why not? It's a pro clear aquatic sump. Look at that. Look how clean that is. I can never have my sump so clean. I can have mine that clean when I first get it. Yeah, <laughs> probably for the first. Time. It'll probably be like this. It. It'll be like this in ten years if it's here for ten years. Yeah, have you not seen Billy Sump that he's been running for like a year? Like it's still the same thing. Like this is gonna every time you you see Billy Sump or see a video, like it's gonna be this clean. Like it's not gonna change. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking he's got like two setups that are identical, and he just swaps <laughs> them every week or two. <laughs> I, hey, I, I used to tide, I drop a Tide Pod in here once a week. I think she, I, 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 I thought that was true until I went to the house and saw it. And Could be a then, secret room, man. You never know. Never know. <laughs> With identical fish, identical corals, identical rockscape, identical everything. Yeah, this is this is done. I just gotta I gotta paint the front side of the door, and that's it. It's done. It's got a good good finish on it. Good reflection. Well, you know, oh, you've you've gotten one of my paint jobs. Yes, I have. Oh, I still haven't made a video about it yet, Billy. Jeez. Yeah, I'm not holding my breath. Oh, <clears throat> here you go. Tip of the tip of the week. When you're painting, put a trash bag over it. So when you're done, just throw the thing in the garbage. You don't have to scrub the paint out. See that? See that? So you That's don't have to idea. use your. So you don't have yeah. to use your paint. Um, your paint. Um, thingy. Look, look. So when you're done painting, just take this. You can see how I used to do it, and the paint never comes off. Oh. You just take your bang, paint. You don't have to scrub Boom. nothing. Done. Dry. Perfect. And then put your roller in a Ziploc and wait till the next day. This has been in here for like two weeks. Still, Still wet. wet. Still wet. Oh. Yep. Okay. Zip, you ziplock it. You fold it over. Never did the ziplock technique. I always used aluminum foil. Yeah. Well, that'll work, right? Interesting. So what's that? Is that for a seventy-five? No, it's a T sixty-five. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right, good stuff. Billy does excellent work. Excellent, excellent work. All right, guys, it is 1025. Um, thank you guys for joining. Um, we have been going two hours. I really have some um, some um, other things I got to take care of. Thank you for joining in, Alex. Thank you, Asa. 
Haven't seen you in a while, Asa. It's good to see you. Very, very good to Have see you. Have a good one. All right. Thank I will you leave for you having us all. Herring Fish, Billy Pipes, thank you for joining. Mellow yeah, Tree Man, thank you for joining. Exclusive. No problem, man. Um, in the chat, Dave Murphy, thank you for that super chat. Unlucky Eddie, Grief Keeper was in early. Um, Greg probably tried to get in and couldn't. Jason Chow, um, thank you. Lisa for posting all the links. Reef God, I saw your text. I'll respond. Rip, Awoken, um, Murphy, um, a bunch of people who were in earlier but now left. Thank you guys for joining, and good night. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, man.